Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Surrounds with Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the force on a charged particle within a magnetic field, guys. And we're going to be looking at the formula F is equal to BQV. So this lesson is all about the force on a charged particle within a magnetic field. And before we get going guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so let's have a quick recap on another topic before we get onto this one. Alright, so previously we looked at circuits in which you had a wire carrying electricity and part of that wire has been placed within a uniform magnetic field. So look, here you have a wire over here and we've placed a bit of it within the magnetic field here. Notice we've got the magnetic field lines north to south going across over here. That's going to be the magnetic field lines here. Right, so what's going to happen is this. When we uh, connect this up and we let the current flow through it, we know that there's going to be a force experienced by the wire. Why? Because we know that when current flows through the wire, don't forget now current's going to flow through the wire, it will generate its own magnetic field which will interact with this one and therefore the wire experiences a force. So we get a force on that wire. Everyone happy with that? Um, and previously we can identify that to calculate the magnitude of that force, the force on the conducting wire is equal to BIL. That's going to be the force on a conducting wire. There we go. And then I then drew this diagram, everyone, over here. This is a bird's eye view of this one. So imagine you look at this on, from top down, you'd see just the wire over here, uh, the current's going this way, down through it, and we've got the magnetic field still going from the left to the right over here. So this is the same diagram as this one. But we know the force on the conducting wire can be calculated by F is equal to BIL. But now we're going to talk about what about the force of one charged particle. So we're going to consider what would the force be if we looked at one of the electrons inside here. So let's just imagine we had an electron, obviously inside that wire, what would the force be on that wire? That's what we're going to be discussing today. Okay, so the best way to tackle this is the following. So look, this is the same as the previous diagram from before. Yes, there's the wire of length L. Um, we've got it over here now. So let's just look inside that wire. So I'll just pretend that we can see inside the wire. Yeah, so we're just drawing it a bit thicker right now. That's the inside of this wire. Um, let's say we have uh, one of those charged particles, one of the electrons. Yes, one of the electrons here. What would be the force experienced by the one electron? Not the whole wire, just one electron. Well, we can actually work this out. Right, so um, we already know that the force on the entire wire over here um, is going to be, we know it's going to be F is equal to BIL, everyone. Yes, the force on the entire wire, F is equal to BIL. But we know that the current, the current flowing through here, the current, obviously there's going to be a current flowing through this wire, the current's going downwards right now, the current's flowing through here. The current in the wire will be equal to the charge flowing per unit time. What is going to be the charge? Hopefully we can remember that the charge will be equal to the number of electrons by, times by the charge of each electron divided by time taken. Everyone happy with this? Yes, we can hopefully remember from previously that the charge Q is equal to NE, yes? Total charge is equal to the number of electrons times by the charge of each electron. And E is going to be a constant. It's going to be 1.6 times by 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Uh, hopefully you've covered that previously, yes? 10 to the minus 19 coulombs here. Right, now we're going to take this equation and we're going to substitute it back into here. So it becomes, uh, we'll change the color of the pen. F is equal to B, um, and then I, don't forget, uh, I is going to be now, so we're going to put it in here, uh, open bracket N, E, divided by T, close bracket, and L over here. There we go. Um, oh, also, guys, don't forget that uh, B stands for magnetic flux density, so B is going to be the magnetic flux density, and um, we know that um, L is this length of the wire here. L is the length of the wire here, which is the same as this length over here. Excellent. Okay, so now we're here. Right. We are then going to now just um, get this rejig it a bit. So F is equal to B N E L divided by T. Very good over here. Now, we can also talk about, let's say you are this electron and you have moved this length in a certain unit of time. 
So if you are the electron, you're going to travel this distance to divide in a certain amount of time. What is that? What is traveling a distance L divided by T? What is that also commonly known as? Well, that is known as the velocity. So that will be equal to V, the velocity of the electron as it is moving. So we now have the idea of V. So let's put that at the top over here. V is equal to the velocity of the particle, velocity of particle. Okay, right, so we're closer now. So we know that L over T is equal to V. So look, I can replace this bit over here, um, L over T, this part of the equation. Yes, that will be equal to V. So therefore, my equation then becomes F is equal to B, N, E, and now L over T is represented by V over here. So this is the force on N particles. So this is the force on n number of particles, number of particles, guys. Then I can use the formula F is equal to B N E V. Right, okay, so if this is the force on n particles, what would the force be on one particle? Okay, right, so from here, this is the force on n particles, but if we want the force on one particle, we have to take n is equal to one. Yes, because this is the force on all of the particles, but for one particle, n is equal to one. There we go, so n is equal to 1. So now look, we can plug that into there. We know that the force on one charged particle will be equal to B E V over here. And this is our formula, F is equal to BEV. I hope we're, everyone's happy with that. All right, so I've just boxed it in right now. Don't forget that we identified that F is the force, B is the magnetic flux density, E is the electron charge, and V is the velocity of that electron here. But let's say it wasn't an electron moving, it could be another charged particle, we might need a more general expression. So this will become F is equal to B Q V. So Q is the F for any charge, for any charge. So that is the more general expression that you might find, guys. F is equal to B Q V, guys. Don't forget, we only used E when we know it's an electron, but for any charged particle, we can say F is equal to B Q V here. Don't forget to work out the direction of the force. You take Fleming's left hand rule. You orientate your hand in this direction. We know that the field is going across, the current's going down. The force on the wire is out of the board. Yes, yeah, so out of this page here, out of your screen. That's how we get that value. And obviously this electron will move in this direction. It will move out towards us. So that is the direction of the force here. So you can use left hand rule to determine the direction, but to calculate the magnitude of the force, we can use F is equal to BQV. Right, so let's look at an example question. Okay, so let's look at the following question. Calculate the force experienced by an electron with a velocity of seven times 10 to the power seven meters per second within a magnetic field of 40 millitesla. Calculate the force experienced by the electron here. Right, so if you want to work out the force experienced, first of all, identify it's not an entire while, so you can't use F is equal to build. So that will not work here because obviously you don't have the entire length of the wire. So you can't use that, so that's not gonna help us at all. But we already know that the force on one charged particle will be equal to B Q V. Yes, my general expression over here. So the force is equal to, uh, let's plug it in. Um, we know it's going to be the magnetic flux density is 40 times by 10 to the minus three Tesla. The charge is going to be the electron charge because it's an electron which is moving. So Q is taken as 1.6 times by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then finally times by the velocity, which we've got seven times by 10 to the power of seven over here, meters per second. Right, let's plug it all in and see what we get. Right guys, I'm getting my answer of the force going to be 4.48 times by 10 to the minus 30 newtons. That will be the force experienced by this electron here. Easy stuff. Right, fantastic stuff here. In my next video, I'll be talking about the direction of the force experienced by the charged particle and what kind of motion that will therefore cause the charged particle to experience. That's in my next video. And that's it for another session of Surrazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to get my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.